I'm going through all of these iterations after iterations after iterations because if I go and draft a pattern based on a half-baked version of the pattern it may not work at all and looking at the photograph of that edge I could see this edge is actually very very curved like the edge of a skirt that started to give me some clues I think I've been reusing the wrong pattern all along I don't think this was the right one I think this was a better one so actually if I follow this pattern a bit more closely maybe I'll get a pattern that's a bit more like what I want new breakthrough this front piece is not rectangular and I think judging by this the white triangle just is inserted in that seam I think I've finally done it all the flowers they just fit so what we need to do now is take this pattern draft and draft it out for real the half width of the back opposite five as above explained applies only to proportionate forms in custom cutting the measure to determine this width should be taken and applied in the following manner in other words that measurement you took two pages ago should have been done like this now proceed as already explained in other words I just fell into a Victorian booby trap. And now, I'm going to start again. Don't ever tell me, dear audience, that I never tell you how it really is. I have saved you the wailing and the gnashing of teeth. However, that happened yesterday and now we're ready to start again.
have now is the pattern completely drafted out of the Ulster coat as it appears in the book. So exactly as it appears here. So that is now one huge full size pattern in my measurements. And now I just need to superimpose new lines onto this pattern so that I get my coat pattern out of this. Right, so now that I've got my basic pattern drafted out, the pattern as it appears in the book, I've just drafted this as is. You might wonder why I've done that, because there's an awful lot of detail on here that I'm not gonna need, because my pattern is much simpler. But bear with me on this, because this is my pattern, based on the basic pattern. And what I'm gonna be able to do now is take this pattern that I've drawn and superimpose the lines I want over the top. So I'm going to take this appropriately purple pen and figure out, looking at this small diagram, what I want to keep, what I want to change. So for example, if you look at this front piece, the armhole and the shoulder and the neck are going to stay the same. I need to keep those, so I'll just draw over those. The front, I don't need that lapel, I haven't drawn it anyway. I need the centre front line. I don't need this big dart down the middle of the front, but I do need that line down the middle because that'll help me with where the embroidery goes. And the line of the side, which is here on the original coat, becomes a straight line. But I can tell where that straight line goes based on where the lines on the original pattern are. So basically I'm going to draw over my original pattern to replicate this using the original pattern as a guide. So that is my next job now. And it may seem like it takes a bit longer that way, but if that's how I came up with this pattern, then why not replicate the process? And let's see how that works out. to the kitchen where you may notice the eagle-eyed among you that there has been chocolate muffin action. Being a mostly healthy person you may surmise from this that this is not going well. So you saw the diagram there are just a mess of lines all over it as I try to make this work. I've realized that these two diagrams are actually fairly interchangeable. They're both drawn exactly the same way when you actually get into the drafting instructions. The two drawings are different because they're not to scale. So my drawing all over them and fitting the embroidery on wasn't entirely practical. So now I'm trying to figure out, because I started drawing lines on that pattern draft and finding that it just didn't make sense. After doing all that really precise measuring, of this is a quarter of the bust, and this is half an inch, and this is this, and this is that. Draw a line from here to here, and that's where that crosses that. To then go in and try to freehand lines over the top, it just didn't feel right. It was a bit like when I was working on my previous project and just looking at the pattern and going, there must be a way that this makes sense. This was drafted like this and I'm trying to get into the head of the person who drafted it. So I know now, having drafted this and then comparing it to this three seam coat, which is probably more like what it's actually like, because it's a looser coat with fewer pieces. These are actually virtually identical with just a few differences. So I'm going through both of these pattern drafts now and trying to figure out what is the system that these two are both based on so I can then derive a way to draft my pattern. And I know I'm probably overthinking this and anybody else would probably just make something and start mocking it up and fiddling with it. I want to know how this was done the first time and not just fudge it to kind of work. I want to make something that when I put it on the mannequin and we do a side by side with the original coat and my coat, it looks like, oh, it's so close. And, you know, math for the win, I guess. So I'm going to go through and 
continue to try and figure out how this pattern draft works so that I can use it to make any coat, which is perhaps what I should have done in the first place. So we got a fresh start, it's a new day. I am wearing a clean top, it's just the same as the one I was wearing the last day I was filming. And I think we're getting there with this pattern draft. You can see here how ridiculous my pattern draft became as I tried to draw on it and move the seam lines. So I went back to try to understand better how these pattern drafts work. Now that I've done this draft, twice. I'm starting to understand much better. It's very difficult to tell what's going on when you just read these instructions because despite the fact you've got a diagram it's fairly obscure. It's much easier to figure out what's going on when you actually do it. Like draw the line from 1 to A. Huh. Draw the line from... Huh. As you watch it build it's much easier to understand it than to try to imagine it in your head. So I was trying in last month's video to figure it out from just looking at the pictures and obviously the pictures aren't to scale. Primarily because the whole point of this is that you're taking your measurements so they're not necessarily, you know, my pattern is not necessarily going to look like the one in the book because my measurements are different from the next person's measurements. So I am now understanding better how these work and I'm figuring out that despite their differences, despite the fact that the diagrams look different, despite the fact that the way that the diagram points on the diagrams are numbered is different from diagram to diagram, they're all basically the same one. They're all variations on a theme, which sounds obvious now, but you can see how different these two look. And yet, apart from the outline, you know, the neck, the shoulder, the armhole, the, you know, the, the front, they're actually pretty much done the same. And that also goes for the other bodices and coats in the book. So because I'm seeing now how closely aligned they all are, I'm seeing that they're not that different and therefore I can figure out what the key differences are between them and mix and match the pieces I want so that I'm going to kind of be able to do something hybrid. I wouldn't have been able to do that without trying them out because it seems like a recipe for disaster. And it may still be. This is just the process we go through. I mean, this is, this is the issue with doing videos like this. Most of the videos you will see are people going through a project and they might show you some of the problems and the pitfalls, but I told you that I would show you the complete process and that means there's going to be a messy middle. So I think I'm going to try and mix and match. I'm going to draft this a third time, God help me, and we're going to see if I can take the pieces I want of the basic coat draft, which does refer back to a basic bodice draft earlier in the book. You know, part of it, it just says go back and do this piece and then mix and match the pieces I need. For example, there's this tight fitting coat. There are then looser fitting coats in the book. And this one is another loose fitting coat. And one of the key differences is this little measurement here, C to E. Let me try and explain a little bit how these drafts work. So you saw me take my measurements last year for my previous project. I'm using those measurements again. And what happens with one of these drafts is that you start at one here in the top right hand corner. You draw a line out this way. You draw a line down the side. So you've got two lines at right angles. And then you measure down one to A to get the back of the neck. One to C, the neck to the waist, which I measured. One to C1, which is to the hip line and one to D, which is the bottom edge of the coat. And then you square lines out from there at right angles to this vertical line. And then you start taking measurements along here and connecting points so you get these diagonal lines. And then you can start just constructing the pattern. And 
Crucially, it's a pattern that conforms exactly to your personal measurements, which is the point of going through all this palaver in the first place. It's a lot easier to buy a pattern, a standard pattern, but they tend to be graded for standard sizes. So they'll be more messing about when it comes to the mock-up stage sometimes. This is custom work, so you can make it exactly conform to your measurements from scratch and not just adjust something that's a standardized size. One of the first measurements you take is that you measure along this waistline from C to E. And this is the back of the waist. You can see how it slopes in from the back of the neck to the waist. All of these patterns slope inward slightly so that it takes account of that little curve in the back of your waist and doesn't just hang loose. Clearly with this coat, it's not gonna do that as much as it would on a tight fitting coat. So on this tight fitting coat, C to E is one and a half inches that much. But on the looser fitting coats, C to E is only half that, three quarters of an inch. That doesn't seem like a big deal, but as anybody who's ever made a corset will tell you, when you add those differences up over a number of pieces all the way around the garment, it can make a big difference. I mean, when you're making a corset with 10 different pieces all the way around, millimeters can make a huge difference when they're added up over all the different pieces. So three quarters of an inch into the back of the waist for a loose fitting coat, an inch and a half for a tight fitting coat. And I'm just starting to, as I look at the different drafts, now that I've done this one twice and I understand it better, I'm seeing the various subtle differences between them. And if we go back to this sack coat, this sack jacket has a seam that looks remarkably like the seam that I need on my coat. So if you compare those two, I mean, this front piece of this coat goes all the way around to the side back. That is not unprecedented. Mine is the same look. We've got a seam there, but it's, there's no shaping in that seam as far as I know yet. So this is a piece that needs to go all the way around. This seam here is right around towards the side back. This reminds me actually of earlier men's coats. This is a coat from 1810 in a cut of men's clothes by Nora War. And this is a coat from 1810, so nearly a hundred years earlier. But you can see again, there's this huge front piece. You can see the buttonholes down the front here and the armhole here. And this whole front piece goes all the way around to the side back. And then the back piece is fairly narrow, which is fairly similar to what we've got on my coat. The back is fairly narrow and we've got this huge front piece. So that's kind of what I want. I kind of want a seam right back there. And I can get that if I use the placement of this seam, how this is drafted on this pattern much earlier in the book. But I know now that I can do that because this pattern draft for this loose fitting sack jacket is so similar actually to all the other coat patterns that I don't need to freehand it. I can do it how it was drafted and do it in a way that makes sense and hangs together and isn't just kind of made up as I go along. So hopefully that will look a little bit more just refined and tailored when I come to the real thing. It won't look like I made it up. It will just, I think, give a little bit more finesse in the final coat and make more sense because there's, you know, a precedent for it. So all of that is to say, I am going to God help me draft this buggery thing for a third time. And I will do the basic framework of the draft and then pick and choose which seams I want from other diagrams in the book and see if I can get to something that looks right that way. But I think this one is gonna be an important one. And then I think I found another one to do the other side of that piece. Anyway, cue another montage of me drawing on bits of paper.
J through 2 as represented. The width of the back at J, 2 and S may be increased or diminished according to taste or style. So according to this pattern, just freehand it. F*** you, S.S. Gordon. F*** you. <laughs> okay, so the book has told me to freehand it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is going a great deal better in a quite remarkable way. I think I've figured this out. You know, suddenly you have a day when, oh, it all came together just like that. I'm not going to ask questions. Let me show you what I've got. I've drafted out the basic shape again with the outline as it is for all of these patterns and I'm getting really good at armholes now since I've had so much practice. I did the basic framework that would work for any of these coats in this book and then somehow these back seams that I wanted to delineate where this section is just kind of happened very naturally and then I was drafting out the skirt of the back piece so coming down and drafting out the, you know, the flared lines that create that skirt and, you know, what is the width of that? Who knows? Drafted that out, had all these lines drawn in and suddenly it just naturally meets into the waistline here. And what's more, if I put the ruler along the edge of that coat piece, the line carries on just about almost to the top of the shoulder which is exactly what the line should do in order to make the line of that embroidery also go up the side of that piece and almost to the point of the shoulder. So it's coming together remarkably well and I'm not going to breathe on anything in case it stops going so well.
completed pattern at last on a very large sheet of paper. I can't cut out these pattern pieces because as you can see, since it's all drafted in one piece, the pieces overlap each other, especially when you get down into the skirt of the coat here. So what I'm going to have to do is to trace each individual piece off and leave this as the sort of master pattern draft. I'll trace each of these pieces out individually, put a seam allowance on it and cut that out and then I'll have a pattern that I can put on some fabric. So in order to do that we need one more little tool that you haven't seen me use before and I'm going to have to look in my sewing boxes for it. is a pattern tracing wheel and it is a little wheel on a handle. It's got a little spiky wheel on it so you can trace through two pieces of paper and mark on the piece of paper underneath. So that's what I'm going to do now. Finally, we have a pattern that I can actually use to get some fabric out and cut some fabric and make something. So here we are, the final five pieces, five main pieces of the pattern. I've got the book out here so I can show you which is which. Here is the back. This is the back section. Here's the centre back seam here. Here's the neck, the back of the neck, shoulder, armhole. This section next to it is going to be cut out of the lace and that white fabric. That's this section down the side back here. That's here. And then this is the big section under the arm. The one here that has the strange diagonal seam across it, which is going to go somewhere across here. And then this little triangle is that little white section at the front here we saw in the museum and finally that huge piece at the other end that's the center front piece with you can see the rest of the armhole here and the neck there and the shoulder so this makes up a complete coat you may have noticed I haven't made a sleeve or a collar yet and that's primarily because it's much easier to fit a mock-up when you're just fitting the main body of it first. You get in a mess if you try to do everything at once. So if we just fit the main body of it first, and then when I've got the main body of it right, then we'll start making a collar and messing with a sleeve and that kind of thing. So we'll do this in sections, but we are finally at a point where we have a pattern. So now I can finally get out some fabric, calico, and we can start mocking this thing up. So I'm going to start pressing this fabric now and we will be probably making a mock-up in July because next month I'm going to be away for most of the month. 
You remember last year, I was making a big video about my big project every month. Now that we're no longer in lockdown, that is going to get a bit more complicated, as I said earlier this year. So I'm not quite sure what I'm doing next month for a video. We'll see. I'm supposed to be away. I'm supposed to be taking a break, but we'll see. I will take cameras with me and we'll see what happens. By the way, I would love to know in the comments below, what is your experience with pattern making like this? You've watched me go through a very long and involved process to create a pattern from scratch from measurements that fits me personally. And I know a lot of people are interested in that, but might not have tried it before. So tell me in the comments, if you are a person who sews, do you always buy patterns? Do you adjust existing patterns? Or have you had a go at doing these kind of pattern drafting techniques? Have you used the Victorian patterns that are in like the Keystone Guide or the pattern drafting books that you can get online? Or is this something completely new to you? Is this of interest to you? Or is this just completely beyond what you would be willing to do? Tell me about that in the comments. And I'll see you next time.